<laughs> I missed it. Oh, those were some satisfying. Ah, I just flicked beer into my face. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm glad I get to finally drink this. I've been trying to drink this for the past 30 minutes. All right, you got to try this. Ready? Like this. Ooh. That's the... <laughs> what? Isn't that working for you? Weird. I guess it's like a unicorn. My can is a unicorn. Oh, but I like the sound. Oh, it's like a little cricket. Oi. Oi. Right. Fucking weirdos. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, you're going the wrong way. Which That's where part are you of going? That's to me. Oh, hey. That was not planned, y'all. I mean, you know we no. don't have we don't ever plan bits, but every once in a while I'll be like, guys, I have an idea and I'm not gonna tell you. And that was I just accidentally that was shot organic. beer into my face. And that, was, <laughs> that was that was called living in the moment. It's mm. what we in the business called being open to the universe. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, and each other. Yes, and <laughs> um, we you're gonna hear a lot of this sound in this episode. Are you ready? And a little bit of this sound. Oh, somebody, somebody just got squigged. Sorry. The, <laughs> not sorry. The lovely Kate Kulsik baked us 3,000 cookies. It's really amazing. Kate does this thing, embarrassing her, every year where she makes over fucking 5,000 Christmas cookies with her family. Look at these like cranberry things. I'm Those so excited. So, Those look so good. They really mm-hmm. do. Um, and then she delivers yeah. them and she brought some to us, like specifically drunk cast cookies. And it is so nice. The snickerdoodle I'm eating right now is delicious. The best part for, of right? it to me mm. was free cookies. Closely <laughs> followed by the schematic with photos of each cookie and then a note as to whether it contained nuts or was gluten free. There are 26 different varieties of cookies. It's amazing. <laughs> I uh, would say we'll post a picture on Twitter or in our Slack or whatever. But uh, instead, I'm going to go ahead and encourage you, uh, to, if you're hearing this, if you're on Patreon, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you may be hearing this tomorrow to us, Monday. Uh, in which case it'll be that day. If not, uh, if you're just a regular old iTunes or Stitcher or whatever listener, this will already have happened, but you can still go back and find it at thetakeout.com, Ooh. one of my employers. Our friend Kate Kalzik has a story running, and I think the headline is something like, what I learned from several years of baking 5,000 plus Christmas cookies. <laughs> uh, and there are pictures of her whole setup, and I think there's a picture of the schematic. That's awesome. Uh, if there's not, then I will post one somewhere, because you got to see it. It's amazing. But look like, look at this shit. Look at those. Look I at, know. There are so look many at the, I had one of what these. What are those? Are Chocolate peanut balls? balls are with like peanut butter in it? In yeah, there? and mm-hmm. crunchy. Ooh. Yep, get in there. Like a These little mints, right some mints. Out. Ooh, mint meltaways. Yep, get in there. Get they in there. Meltaways. Look at that. Look at this cute little pinwheel. Some oh. kind of date. This thing. Jesus. Oh my god! You know what these are? These come from the little spritz guns. Have you guys ever seen those? I mean, they look like cock guns, but you fill them with fucking cookie dough, uh-huh. and then this comes out, and you're all like. Down your cookie sheet. I'm taking one of these. Somebody else has to take the other one because I think this one is my favorite. So I'm being really. I've selfish. already had one of those. Oh, it's delicious. Yes. Love okay, it. I'm gonna eat one of these. You these guys. These chocolate balls are good. Hold on for just. Are they salty? Mm. <laughs> yeah, these salty chocolate balls. These fucking. Mmm. Mm. Nice job on the meltaways, Kulzik. Mmm. Kulzik, I'm enjoying one of the pistachio cherry situations. Holy shit! All right, I have to stop. Or I'm gonna go into a diabetic coma. I'm about to lose my foot. Here I go. <laughs> Alternate suggestion. <laughs> you could not stop. Mm-mm. Can't stop, won't stop. Mm. Mm-hmm. That one was, the melt away was very sweet, but very good. Jeez, God, it's Fuck just yeah. so All right, we're going to talk about Christmas. Kate's cookies for two hours. <laughs> no, because you know what? Here's a segue. Here's a segue for your nerve. Mm. Yeah. These are a lovely Christmas and or holiday gift oh. for us. Mm-hmm. And you know what else was? <gasps> The return. Surprise, Menzies. Surprise, <laughs> Menzies. Tobias, we're so happy to see you. That oh. was really wonderful to experience that with it both It was of really you. great. Yeah. That was really great. I yeah. was glad you watched. Janine watched this week. It was mostly just because he's been out the last couple weeks. We were like, fuck it. Let's hang out with Aaron. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Let's hang out with Janine. Who's yeah. Aaron? Yeah, I don't know um, that guy. Did not knowing, not knowing that Frank was going to show up. Yeah. I want to thank 
all of the listeners out there who didn't say shit in the Slack channel or on the Facebook page or any of this other shit because I was completely unspoiled. It's my first episode watching since I watched all those screeners that I hadn't seen, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, the last time I watched an an episode of Outlander I hadn't seen before was October. Right. (laughs) So this was, and I was like, oh, cool, we'll get to see what happens. I I already knew Ian was going to show up, that Daddy was going to show up because of some shit that Stars put on Twitter, right? But, man, they kept that Frank stuff locked down. Yes. It was great. And it was so good to see him and... Once again, remember how fucking good he is. And that guy is just a just, pal. He's just to really Tobias good. Menzies. He's, he's to Tobias Menzies. Cheers. Cheers. Good Cheers, God, buddy. man. Yeah. Welcome really back. good job, mm. Jacting. Mm-hmm. Mm. How does one smile and grimace at the same time? Ask him. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to see a lot of it in the crown. When is the crown fucking back? I'm Googling. Oh, oh that's oh, right. Yeah, because he's playing Prince Philip. Season three. Let's find out. It should be soon, Release right? date... It should be soon. After the holidays? Um, after Olivia Coleman wins an Oscar. Mm-hmm. Ooh, God, there's a picture. Fuck yes. I can't see shit. I put my glasses over there. Oh, is that Olivia Coleman? Yep. Yes, she looks good. Janine. She does look very queenly. Oh, gosh. Yeah. She's about to win a fucking Oscar, probably. For the favorite? Oh, there's, yeah. there's one of uh, Menzies. Is there? That's Prince yeah. Philip. Yeah. Uh, where is this? Oh, come on. Where's that photo? Right here. Got it. Oh. Let me see. Middle-aged Philip. Yes, look. He is, There's no date. He's just grimacing in that photo. Oh, though. I have seen that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's just grimacing. Now. No date yet. I would assume probably oh, sometime after the holidays. HBC. Oh, and, and she's Princess Margaret. Margaret. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a really interesting casting thing. I know she's going to be fucking great, but she doesn't resemble... Princess Margaret much? She does not. So the woman who played her in season one and two really did. So it's interesting. I do think that Tobias Menzies resembles Prince Philip more than Matt Stone did. It's Matt Smith. Smith. Matt Smith, I'm sorry. Matt Stone is fucking South Park. <laughs> not him. Not him. Not the basketball guy? No. Oh my God, that movie is the fucking worst. <laughs> they started filming in July... Expected sometime in 2019, no date yet. Okay. Probably I would not surprise me if Netflix drops that information in January. Probably, well, probably summer. I'm excited to see... Well, it's usually November, December is the thing. Oh. Yeah. I'm excited to see a return of regular Menzies because it's yeah. been irregular. It's and been, I need some more regular. It's been spotty. <laughs> and I need... I I've need, been concerned about my health yeah, for that reason. Yeah, I need a little <laughs> more regularity in that front. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's, I mean, there's plenty of stuff to talk about besides that. And we are going to go through our usual recap, but I feel like we, there's one thing we have to touch on first. Mm-hmm. So at, at the old wizard world in August, yeah, we were, mm, I was going to say taken in, but that's, that sounds negative ensorcelled by the personal charms what a word. of one mm-hmm. Sophie Skelton. Mm-hmm. That's true. Very charming, insanely charming. Mm-hmm. So much that we were like, we should, we should chill. <laughs> she seems really cool. We should be cool. And maybe when she gets used to her accent, she will be better. I will say, I think her accent was pretty solid in this episode. It's improved for sure. Yeah. So do we think that Miss Sophie has improved? Um... Mm. <laughs> yes, I I do, but I think to me it's all wrapped up in her accent so far. So like I'm thinking about, oh, okay, her accent doesn't sound so bad anymore. And that's kind of what I'm focused on. I don't know. There were moments <sighs> this time where I, uh, it caught me a couple times. Yeah. This is a hard episode for her though because she has a lot of solo moments and a lot of good moments, mm-hmm. but she's uh, on on the opposite of uh Tobias and uh, Leary, Leary. Mm-hmm. and though another surprise, and mm-hmm. they're going through some heavy stuff, yep. and like their journeys are so incredible. Nell Hudson, yeah, right? Man. She yeah, did a good right. job. She did do a good job in this episode, and so she. I, I agree with Janine in yeah. that Sophie uh, slash Brianna had to carry a lot of like reactive load yeah. mm-hmm. in this episode, and sometimes that's not the easiest job. I don't think she did a bad job. I just think that occasionally it didn't feel lived in or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think that her accent is way better. So I think, you know, once the story becomes about her acting 
instead of reacting, yeah, she becomes, then I'll make a judgment call. Yeah, I but, think that's reasonable. Yeah, I do think that, that some of her more active scenes, which were also reactive, but like specifically her slowly starting to figure out why the fuck this woman went from being so nice to her to such an asshole. Uh, right. was really good. And yeah. her like yelling about how Jamie Fraser never loved her and shit. It was like, all right, Sophie. I was a little bit mad. And I know that this didn't happen in the book the way that it did in the show. Um, firstly, I was mad that it was Leary that found her because that just seems so fucking not real. I don't know. Once again, I just have to remind myself that I'm watching a television show and it's fiction and I just need to chill the fuck out. And then secondly, I was really, really pissed off that she said, I know they're going to die in a fire. So yeah, I had to come save them. Some very bad time traveling. That's and just girl, an idiot. You're, did you learn nothing from listening <laughs> to your mom tell all those stories? Like, what the fuck? They're going to burn you at the stake, you stupid, stupid You took girl. the time to put on a period-appropriate outfit. And not use... And to find, like, period-appropriate maps. And not use cling wrap. And not, and use, like, you know, wax. Paper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've, like, you started a fire, you, fi- you figured all this shit out, and you couldn't think, don't tell people you came from the future. Yeah. Don't do it. Rule number one of time travel, don't talk about the fact that you're a time traveler. Some butterfly effect yeah. shit. Well, and I'm trying to think, like, <laughs> yep. if there's something she could have said that would communicate, like, this is a life or death matter, that wasn't, I know they're going to die in a fire. Right. Um, I received a letter, and my parents are in a bad way financially. I need to go help them. I know. I received a letter, and I know they're in danger. I need to go warn them. Mm-hmm. She could have even just said as much as, I had a really, I had a dream. And, like, I feel very compelled. And even that's, like, reaching a little too far, but still. Or, I miss my parents, and I just want to go live with them. Yeah. What about, there was a death in the family. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Someone needs to tell them. Yes. Yes. Something. These are all incredibly reasonable things to say at this point. Not, they're going to die in a fire. And I I can't explain to you how I know this, but I know this. Oh, God. (laughs) So uh, that kind of also distracted me a little bit too, that and Leary finding her. So to be frank, I wasn't, <laughs> I get it, get it, get it. To be frank, I wasn't fully invested in the <laughs> Brianna Leary stuff. The little girl, Joni, was very sweet. She but was wonderful. Like, she was mm-hmm. sweet. She had some good moments too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. should we, this is going to be an interesting episode for book readers because mm-hmm. it's very different. And I wonder, like, do you think I should save that because it's not spoilery this shit's Mm -hmm. not gonna happen um so i don't know is it worth saving it for the spoiler section or if it should be just in the books i don't know what do you think is there things that would ruin shit for people Mm. there's one thing that there's one thing that we'll leave for spoilers that i was really hoping they were going to bring in that they did not that relates to frank's letter okay Mm. and what frank knew about claire's future Mm -hmm. Um, in the past Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Back in time. Back in time. Doc Brown just pulled up. He's in a garbage. He's like, shut it's up. Delorean. You know what? <laughs> I think I fucking, you know, Janine, I think I fucking said, cue the Huey Lewis and my what's on tonight that I wrote about this. I'm just, you know what, y'all? I was very proud of this. I feel like I left little Easter eggs for anybody who listens to the pod. In the what's on tonight for this episode um, that included Brianna uh, touching a giant hunk of stone Mm -hmm. to go back in time. But I think one of them was like, cue the Huey Lewis, Uh (laughs) which is very uh, inappropriate Mm -hmm. for the content of the episode. But still, anyway, it doesn't matter. Point being, if you read what's on tonight, I am right on the AV Club. I am writing those. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, and I got to write about Outlander this time, and it says Outlander fires up the old standing stone circle for some more time travel shenanigans. We know, we know what she meant. <laughs> it was the word shenanigans that made me go, I wonder if Allison wrote this. <laughs> or, I think, and then my second thought right away was Daphne. Daphne. God damn it. <laughs> so I'm glad it was you and not her. Mm. Um, Daphne, she uh, she's, she's a wetch. Been, she's been hard at work. She is a wetch. <laughs> Burn her. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, no, no. Burn her. <laughs> her. Did you see somebody said in the Slack, if you say, if you say. Oh, yeah, what was it in ghetto? <laughs> space ghetto. It sounds like you're saying spa- Spice Girls in a Scottish accent. Space ghetto. Space ghetto. <laughs> space ghetto. 
But you gotta just say it in an American accent. Space ghetto. Just say it. I, now I want to try and do an accent for some space stupid ghetto. reason. Oh, I I love the space ghetto. I love space ghettos. Ghetto. Ghetto. God damn. Although ghettos works because they were plural. Back in time. <laughs> okay, let's get this recap going. Okay. Do, wait, because it's a back and forth episode. Do we want to do one then the other, or do let's you want to do, do the back and forth action? Let's let's do one and then the other just to make sure we're not skipping things. Okay, this will be hard for me in my notes. And this actually shows me that next time there is a back and forth episode, you know, one page for one and then flip a few pages. I'm just saying I need a new system. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's do Brianna. Since she's the title card, which is her making a PB and J on a piece of wax paper, Allison flipped out that it was not saran wrap. I did. You know what? I was about to protest, but that's pretty accurate. I just, there's, I thought it was, a, you know, well, hey, fuck. It's another trolling book readers thing because Claire makes herself a PB and J that she eats in a fountain outside the, the print shop and she, it's all wrapped up in saran wrap and she balls it up in her fist and is like, <laughs> and just kind of lets it go, like and it. it rolls away. So she's littering on the one hand, that's bad. And on the other hand, it's pretty cool to think of this, like, technological innovation just rolling down the streets of in Edinburgh, Edinburgh in the past. <laughs> okay, I always thought that was kind of cool. Um, and in this moment, too, let's once again, for the 50,000th time, give a shout-out to the props designer and set dressers of this show because the old-school labels of the Jif peanut butter and the Wonder Bread were on fucking point. They looked good. All right. We're going to have a lot of costume praise this episode. So Brianna made it through the stones. She's back in Scotland all by herself. And guess what? It's Survivor Barbie Jr. You know, you know what, you know what she, what she did? She's off the deep end (laughs) into the past now. Sorry, I can't. I've been rewriting the lyrics to shout. This is a bad time of year for me, guys. Uh, I've seen so many movies that I kind of wish that maybe I was just dead instead of having seen all these movies. (laughs) And... I'm like extremely tired. I know, but it's, it's, it's true. I it's reached a, a point where I thought I can't watch another movie or I'm just going to expire and that'll be it. Um, <laughs> Here lies Allison. <laughs> too many movies. Killed by Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Which I am just fucking not going to watch. Yeah. I, every, at a certain point you have to go, I know that this guy's going to get nominated for a bunch of awards, but I just do not care. And Bohemian Rhapsody is, that's the one I'm just, I'm not going to do it. Brief not. side note, I make it brief as possible having a long conversation about about this movie with somebody. I too am not going to watch this movie. A, I fucking hate biopics. B, don't talk don't try to talk to me about Freddie Mercury. But <laughs> I am really glad well because I love him so much. I'm just uh, like back off. Got it. Um I will say Kelly made an excellent point. She's a teacher, a molder of young minds, and a whole bunch of her kids have seen this movie like three and four times because none of them know who Freddie Mercury was or don't know the music of Queen, oh and God. now they're learning about the music of Queen. That okay. is so wonderful. for that, cool. All right. Let's move on. So, Brianna, tromping through the Highlands, solo. Her clothes look pretty good. She kind of figured it out. She's got her big cloak on and her fry boots. Just stomping through the heather. I mean, permafrost, whatever the fuck you call that shit. Um, She does have a map. We talked about her cool map and how she's going to have to burn it later because women can't read. Yeah, it's it's a... (laughs) It's a it, it's a map that looks like somebody back then could have it, except for nobody fucking would. Um, but I do like I feel like Roger and Bree both learned at least a little something, just not enough to not fucking talk about fuck how she up. knows the future. <laughs> what the fuck? And it was so stupid. Um, but she has. It seems like maybe she has a compass. She has a knife. Her costume is not. Period appropriate because Brianna wouldn't have access and is mm-hmm. like and Roger is a, like a mm-hmm. better historian than she is because right. now she goes to MIT. Yeah, uh, she didn't really pay attention in history class. Yeah, she was just pleasing daddy. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, so her, so her her look is good. Her look is on point, but it definitely looks like she went to a bunch of vintage stores and found like costumes from a high school production of Oklahoma and just or like she, put a bunch of pieces together. She raided the closets at the off season Renaissance fair. Yes, something yeah. like that. But she took dude shit with one skirt. And, like, a great pair of boots. Yeah. She just owned those. It would have been a dude's pair of boots, though, at the Renaissance Fair. Mm-hmm. Right. So She just owned those Speaking boots. of the boots. Oh, boy. they are not enough to save her from falling down. <laughs> I admit, so we live, we live streamed this, uh, and, which you can't see now because Sony was like, nope. Anyway, we live streamed this on YouTube, and I felt pretty bad because there was like, doo-doo. 
she's she's walking in a beautiful mountain. And she's and she's like, here I go to find my parents. And she steps and goes, whomp, 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 whomp. <laughs> it was funny. Oh, it was really funny. Weird. <laughs> like that. Um, and then she was hurt, and I felt bad for laughing. But 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 it was kind of funny. The timing of her falling was funny. The result of her falling was not, not funny. funny. And that is that she's fucking by herself, a woman alone, out in the middle of the fucking highlands in 17, blah, 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 just walking by herself, now limping by herself on a severely sprained ankle. Yeah, and just... Not doing well. It's it's not good. She starts herself a fire. She does manage to camp the first night. She eats her PB and J. So she, she rationed that out. Matches. She brought matches. Brianna, you gotta hide that. But they're all just in her giant purse. And I'm gonna need her to cut open a, like a slit in her bum roll and start <laughs> hiding some of that shit. If she's really thinking about it, which is clear, she is not thinking about being a good time traveler. She can also always put them in nature's pocket. <laughs> like just in case she gets pulled uh, over. I would like to go ahead to try to prevent us from getting sued by saying, please don't put matches in your vagina. <laughs> if you are listening to this podcast and you even once considered putting a box of matches in your vagina, I'm going to need you to go ahead and just turn this off right now and never listen to us seek, again. <laughs> seek medical help, first of all. Good Lord. And then so you- she starts a fire. <laughs> She's kind of... Sad and shivery. She eats her PB and J. We don't know what happens to that wax paper, though. Bum, bum, bum. We don't see that. Ah, it's just paper with wax on it. Right, but we don't see if she balls it up or if she burns it or what she does I mean, with it. Maybe some it. old shepherd is going to come across and be like, "What is this? <laughs> this looks like wax and paper." <laughs> And then the next day, her face is a little bit more drawn. She's obviously in more pain. Stumble, stumble, stumble. And then she really just can't walk anymore. Like, she has gone the limit. And she leans against a tree, and we had a brief conversation about why didn't she make herself a fucking crutch? She's such a great engineer. I mean, well, she might have been a little delirious, but she should have done that day one. I was going to say, she there's, been like, there's sticks out there I that fell. are big enough. Hold on, let me find. I w- where could I, I think, find a tree in this beautiful at wilderness? The very least, a walking stick that she could have yeah. leaned on. Like I don't know. Yeah, she's freaked out, and I'm never going to experience time travel. So I mean, I can't talk for her, but I can say, get it together, Brianna. When you're walking in the middle of the woods, there's not a lot to do, and yeah. you know what most people do? They grab a stick. Just yeah. in see, general, we fucking see her. <laughs> Whittling later, too, adds insult to injury. Yeah. Speaking of injury, she falls down and can't get up anymore. It's life alert time. Then she has a dream about falling asleep when she was a kid in the car or on the couch? Car. Was it in the car? Yeah, that was the when, car. When couch car. Couch car. Oh, because it was an old car. I don't know. <laughs> but we see, we flash back to her as a kid, and then we see the car door open, and we hear a beautiful voice. It made me so happy. Frank Randall's back, y'all. Oh, it made me so happy. I felt I felt his his jawline before I heard his voice. It was great. Were these their first scenes together? Mm -hmm. It was the flashback when he came to pick her up when she was asleep. Because no, I mean like Sophie Skelton and Tobias Menzies, their first scenes together. Because no, because oh, to get just the two of them without Claire, wasn't there something in the graduation? Well, but. She's, oh, yeah, they mm-hmm. watch her graduate together. Right. Okay. But certainly the first scenes we've ever seen where it's just the two of yes, them. Yes, I think so. Uh, and they were very good, they I were, think. They were good they together. Were good well, scenes. I mean, once again, he is that, you know, baking soda of an actor that lifts everything. Mm. <laughs> I'm watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine with Tom right now, which I've only seen, like, little episodes here and there of. And... Um, <laughs> Then somebody made mashed potatoes and ran out of salt, so they used baking soda instead, and it really made me laugh. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> How'd that turn out? Not good. Not good. Terry Crews. Hijinks. Hijinks is how that turned out. <laughs> that was <really> great. <laughs> so um, it flashes back to Brianna as a young child falling asleep somewhere, and Frank, like, waking her up to daddy carry her away to her bed or whatever, and we're all fucking thrilled that he's back for a flashback. Then... She gets laid down in her bed or whatever, and then she wakes up and she's actually in a bed. Where is she? Boom, boom, boom. Somebody took her back to their house. Guess who? Liddy. I found this to be a skosh convenient. Mm. I mean, think about it, though. Like, the Dick Rocks are in a certain spot part of Scotland. She was near Lollybrock. Obviously, yeah. Larry lives near Lollybrock. Yeah. But even still, come on. Mm. It just felt a little... Larry Brock? <laughs> It felt a little too, too. So here's a like a brief in the book section. So this doesn't happen in the books. Um, like at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I assumed 
that the reason that that Leary found her is that Brianna was headed to Lallybrock to find out more about where her parents were right then. Because you mm-hmm. remember the obituary is just like 1770, right? Like they can't yeah. read it. They can't read what year it is because it's all smudged or whatever. So it's just like she knows it's somewhere in that decade. She knows where they are in a year to be determined, but not how long they've been there. So dun, I assumed, dun, dun. exactly. So I assumed <laughs> that she was heading to Lallybrock, which is what happens in the book. She goes to Lallybrock to find out where her parents are. Priya, I mean, it seems to me like Brianna is a legacy student. Yeah, I was just going to say that this episode because she's it's, all like, I'm going to go to Harvard with you. And I was like, oh, that's how she got into I'm a, Harvard. I, I'm a little concerned about, about Brianna in terms of her like. Common sense. Tactical reasoning. You no, know, because like uh, when they were talking about, uh, like, we're going to get to this later where he's talking about going someplace. And I'm just like, how, you have to get accepted. Do you just get go? That no, doesn't make no, any no, sense no, to no. me. Legacy, no. <laughs> well, I assume she, she, we know she's smart. She talks about smart things. But then she straight up tells somebody she's from the I future. I know, it's like, not. <laughs> but this, and this is another not particularly smart thing because she says she's heading directly for a port to go right for the United States in the soon to be Americas, as opposed to going to the one place where you know there are people who are going to have information about your parents and saying, hey, can you tell me exactly where they are right now? Because I have to go there. It's kind of urgent. Right. right? So I assumed when when Leary found her that the reason that Leary found her there is because she was en route to Lallybrock. I assumed right. that the person her. who was going to find her was going to be Ian. young Jamie, who oh. is who finds her in the books. They run into each other like out in a field. Is she and, hurt? Um, no. So, but she's wearing pants. So it's, wow. um, she travels back in like, like breaks, mm-hmm. right? And, um, they assume that she's a dude and he's all like, there's a strange man on my land. I have to go check this out. And then he's like, <laughs> oh, it's a lass. And they're chatting and he says, I'm, she says, I'm looking for my parents. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, holy fuck, you're Jamie's, aren't you? You look just like her. Just like him. And she's like, yeah, do you know where they are? And then he said, and then she brings him, he brings her to Lallybrock and ushers her in where Jenny and, and the reason that Jenny isn't in this episode is because Lori Donnelly, A, had a baby and B, was doing a play uh, that I think maybe is still running on Broadway. She was doing a Broadway play. Oh. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't do it. Anyway, she, um, Jenny and Ian are there talking to someone and she gets ushered in by young Jamie and... Uh, Jenny walks up and immediately recognizes Jamie in her face and they have this nice conversation and everything. And then you figure out that the person who's there talking to them is Leary. She's there mm-hmm. talking to them about the about alimony, the right? And she starts talking about like, well, it, first of all, there's no proof that you are who you say you are. You're just some whore. You're just some person being sent by your mother, whatever. And Brianna gets like stone cold face. And again, in the books, it's like six feet tall mm-hmm. and reaches <laughs> in the the like pocket of her time travel pants and pulls out the pearls that her mom left her and throws them on the table. And because they were Jamie's moms, that's proof that she is who she says she is. And Larry runs out all mad and wants money and all that shit. So they do interact, but it's just that. Okay. It's really brief. And then everybody has to talk Brianna down about being upset that Jamie married somebody other than her mom and all that shit. So, well then what do you think the adaptive choice of making it an episode more about Larry is about? Like, what do you think it does? Does it set up conflict later about witches or whatever? Like what, what? No, I think, I mean, I think that part of it is just that Laura Donnelly wasn't there. (laughs) Right. And you can only, I mean, what she goes to Lally Brock, she talks to, to Ian Mm -hmm. and that's it. And I will admit that there are a bunch of really lovely scenes where, Ian gives um, Brianna a tour of Lally Brock and is like showing her places that her dad used to play and Mm -hmm. they have all these nice conversations and it's really lovely and I sort of miss those things. But um, the reason that I was interested in it is it's way more shading than Leary gets in the books and frankly that she's gotten heretofore in the show. Mm -hmm. They've done a little, well, you're not a terrible person, you've just had a terrible life and it's made you kind of a terrible person. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is the most time we actually spend with her where she's just acting like a fucking human being. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like she's not, because she's not focused on Jamie and Claire, she's just being a person Mm -hmm. who she found a woman shivering to death in the cold and brought her home 
home, brought her into her home, even though she obviously doesn't have money. Mm -hmm. And so, and you can, you start to understand her side of the story. And until Brianna knows what happened, she sees the connection between Leary and this husband Mm -hmm. and her mother and And Frank. Frank. Mm -hmm. And I think that parallel is really interesting. Well, I think that also probably is a good explanation for why they focus so much on Leary was to draw that out so that they could have more flashbacks with Frank. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. Yeah. I think I get that. But also I, I do think it's worth, and I'm sure this wasn't their intention primarily, but I think it's worth making her a more well-rounded character Mm -hmm. because both the book and the show have sort of made her like crazy bitch. Yeah. Which Mm -hmm. she is, Mm -hmm. but it's worth asking why, Why? you know, and it's, and the cost of what loving somebody who doesn't love you back, what that can do to you is not insignificant. And we know that because we've seen what it did to Frank, right? Mm -hmm. Like it made him totally miserable, uh, to the point where he fucking died over it basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I think it's, I think it's a very interesting adaptive choice. I wish that it had been paced a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like that's a minor quibble. I think Mm -hmm. like, and I, I also think the the extreme tension of the Roger storyline, which we'll get to, counterbalances it a little yeah. bit. Anyway, I'm in favor of this choice. I wish we had still gotten, wish we got more of Brie at Lallybrock, yes. and I wish that we had had Jenny, which obviously we couldn't. But mm-hmm. so then we meet um, Leary's young daughter Joni. Not meet. We didn't meet oh, well, her. Well, no, we met her when she was a baby. You're she's right. The, no, she's the redheaded red herring. Right, that came in and was like, we thought it was Jamie's kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Daddy! So Her. she pipes up the first time when Mars uh, when uh, Leary's talking about my daughter is also in the colonies. Her name is Marsley. She's married now. And then out of the back, tiny kid, here she comes, Joni. She's married to a frog. And I'm like, you get his name out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you don't be a dick it's to say that. It's just because he's I know, but still, don't oh, call Oh, Julie, a frog. you like making fun of French people. I used to. <laughs> he's the one who changed your mind? Ferguson. Yes. <laughs> Really? Yeah, Fergus changed my mind. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and then uh, then I have right away that it's the scene where Ian is there talking to her about the money. Yeah, they um, they chit-chat for a bit about, like, he's also the, f- the father of my grandchild, and we know mm-hmm. she misses her daughter and all of this shit. It's very nice. Go ahead and go back to sleep. And Brianna goes back to sleep and then wakes up. And to she hears Larry screaming at Ian. Yeah, she hears mm-hmm. a fight, and then she flashes back, and she hears her mom and Frank having a fight about the graduation, which is fair. It was a shitty move, Frank. Mm-hmm. Don't shit where you eat. Yep. Or as my grandmother used to say, don't play with your poop. That's not real. <laughs> she did not say that. <laughs> and then the next day, uh, Larry and Joni are out, and they're kind of beautiful garden can we just admit that this house is kind of a nice house even if she's poor Mm -hmm. like and she's got nice sheets and shit you know and she's got the bed warmer i've got questions about how poor she is i mean well so she was married before right jamie i think is her third husband (sighs) she um I don't remember how much they actually talk about this on the show but there are lengthy sections in the book where jamie talks about how he never really figured out how to please her because she was always a little bit scared of him touching her. And it's Mm -hmm. implied that she had a husband who was seriously abusive. Um, and I can't remember if it was one or two husbands before Jamie, but who died. Um, Mm -hmm. but that no matter that he wanted, even though she wasn't clear, he wanted to like make a go of it and be a good husband to her, but she would shrink away when he tried to touch her. Um, and was obviously scared and like had spent a lot of time talking about how men are assholes to her mm-hmm. daughters who then also think that men are assholes and right. Um, which fair point, I but, mean, but the house is nice. Yeah. So I think it's kill. I think he, maybe he was, a not a Mackenzie. Maybe he was a Mackenzie. I don't remember. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think it's her late husband's house. Okay. Well, she's, I mean, I can understand that she's not bringing any money in or anything, but it kind of looks weirdly idyllic and she's got a lovely garden and she and her daughter like spending time there and it's like, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Brianna comes out to garden with them, presumably, and she's wearing a period appropriate dress that Larry was just like, here you go. So now she's dressed correctly. One of Marsley's, I think. Yes, that's correct. One, I, sorry, sorry. One of 
Muesli's. Muesli's. And I will say that Leary does do a slightly shady thing where she looks at the boob thing like it's too big in the boobs <laughs> for Brianna because <laughs> her boobs aren't as big as Muesli's. I mean, <laughs> Muesli is stacked. And then uh, Leary fucks off and it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just redheads gardening. At little Joni and Brianna. Only and they a, don't garden, they braid hair. And well, they start by gardening, but then Brianna asks if Joni's, uh, she mentions how beautiful Joni's hair is, and it is lovely red hair. And then she says, have you ever had flowers in your hair? And Joni's like, it's not the season, idiot. And Brianna's like, but wait, we can, let me show you how to braid it. And then they're just girls braiding each other's hair, and it's adorable. They both have red hair, redheads unite. Um, and then, still Bree's story. This is a flashback to Frank at the office, drunk off his ass, and Brianna comes in, and we find out that Frank, in his research, presumably about the stuff that he was doing for Claire, when to he find was out about Jamie. to the reverend, yeah. Right. He finds the obituary that we have seen re Fiona and Roger, and now we know Bree has seen it too, um, about Jamie and Claire dying in a fire. So, so it's on his desk, and he's... Half a bottle of scotch down, tanked. Before, let's real quick about this letter. Mm-hmm. So this is some book shit. There is a storyline that has been totally axed after the very first mention of it, which is when Claire sees Jamie's tombstone in Scotland and freaks the fuck out. Do you remember this? And mm-hmm. Roger and Bree are about to like mac in the in the old folly downy church, right? right? And folly downy is a technical term. <laughs> I'm so tired. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Anyway, they're in the Folly Downey Church and they hear Claire like screaming. Mm -hmm. They rush out. She's looking at this tombstone and it's Jamie's tombstone and she doesn't understand why it is that he's so far from Culloden and whatever. Um, That I'm not crazy. That happens in the show, right? I think so. Doesn't she see this? She sees a grave marker or something. Right. They almost kiss in the church and then she screams and. I don't, I don't, I would be lying if I said I remembered. I think that's what happens. Anyway, know. anyway, Patty, the uh, <laughs> point being, that is the only time this has come up, but there's this whole subplot in the books where you find out that Frank planted a gravestone what? saying, <laughs> it's weird, saying that Jamie died. Wow. And Claire thinks that it was his way of like pointing her in the right direction and letting her know that he didn't die because Frank being a historian obviously was going to look Jamie up, right? Mm-hmm. Like being a, a jealous husband slash historian. Yeah. It's his fucking superpower. Yeah. So, so he finds out that Jamie didn't die and then doesn't tell Claire. And to atone for that... He puts this gravestone up so that after he's gone, and he keeps making Claire promise that Brianna won't know about Jamie until after he's gone. And so he puts up this gravestone, assuming that she's going to take Brianna to Scotland. And there's somebody, I think it's the, maybe it's also the graveyard where Blackjack is buried, something. Anyway, where somewhere, somewhere where he thinks that she'll look. Okay. Very convoluted. That's too Point much. Point being... That it's in, it, there's a precedent in the books for Frank knowing that Jamie survived. Okay. And it's suggested, and I'm not going to, it's like barely suggested, but suggested that Frank might have known that Claire went back to okay. because, and they've touched on this already, although not in this episode, which is what I was really hoping for, because he taught Brianna to, to do a bunch of outdoor woodsy stuff. Oh yeah. So Oh yeah, you told me about that. I yeah. Remember. So in theory, and this is not totally confirmed, but in theory, Frank may even have found out that Brianna goes into the past, right? Like in his research. Oh, He's wow. he, he we know the, the man who knew too much. <laughs> totally. <laughs> the obituary confirms that in the show, Frank knew that Claire went back to Jamie. Mm -hmm. So that, like, when he was wasted, what he found out is that she went back and then they died together. Right. So he knew that, like, that puts a very different light on them getting divorced, right? It's not, so that seems to be what sort of finally pushed him to let her go. And that's not a thing that happens in the books that I think is really smart here. Mm -hmm. Um, But because he knows that, I was hoping where they were going to go is, and who knows, they still could. But I was hoping that they would that the show would confirm this thing that the books suggest, which is that Frank teaches Brianna how to shoot and how to ride and how to like 
fucking trap and like build fires and shit to all that kinds of shit. She did build a fire already. too, Right. Because he knew that this was going to happen, that mm-hmm. at the very least Claire was going to go back. I, I mean, at minimum, we know that he knew Claire was going to come back and that she, that there was a possibility that Brianna Brie might follow. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's really smart and it's correcting something in that they just never really touched on whether or not Frank, knew about Jamie and Claire. Mm -hmm. So this is, they were talking about it like, well, what if we're going to break things in the books? And I was like, no, you're, you're fucking fixing something, Mm -hmm. right? Like you're correcting a thing that you never bothered to deal with. That's actually really important because whether or not we see more of Tobias Menzies in the show, Ah. it's important for Claire to sort of make her peace with him. And it's important, I think for Jamie to sort of make his peace with the man who raised his daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's my it's my number one argument in the Frank is not actually an asshole debate that sometimes rages in the Outlander fandom, where people are like, yeah, but he's such a dick, and he did. I'm like, no, well, no, he was he was a bitter man who was brokenhearted for his whole fucking life mm-hmm. because his choice was he could love this woman who didn't love him back and help raise her child with somebody else, knowing he was never going to have kids, uh, or he could just not have any of those things. So he wouldn't have the pain, but he also wouldn't have this little girl and like all mm-hmm. of that shit. Uh, and we know that he loves her because he fucking prepares her to time travel, right. which that love is preparing someone preparing to time travel. Preparing your daughter to time travel back to see her real dad. Ooh. You know what would have been a really good thing to include in that lesson? What? Don't fucking Listen, tell people about Brianna. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you anything specific, but I will say this. If you ever find yourself in, say, another time, <laughs> it might be a very good idea. Very, not very, very, very good to idea. mention that you have any knowledge of future <laughs> I'm just saying that's the number one lesson that a really caring father would teach a time traveling daughter. You know what I really like about this show and just yeah. being being from the future now, I think we're going to be very good time travelers. <laughs> Every time I we're listen to this fucking show, it's a time travel. You know, someone because I'm always like, "What happened?" Some, oh yeah, someone actually proposed a paper on how to time travel recently. A very actually well thought out paper that has a lot of people talking. Weird. One of the things you need though is infinite mass. We're not going to get there. Is that like a black hole though? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Here, here's what I would say. We might, we would know some things not to do, but we would go back in time and see like. I would immediately lose my mind. Right. Well, you would see like a horse and buggy and go, oh, holy fucking shit. And then you'd be dead. And then they burn like, me. That's it. Then you'd be dead. They burn me. I'd have to, I think that if I went back in time and I've said this before, I would have to disguise myself as a dude and pretend to be mute. Hmm. Maybe deaf too. But then, like, how do I escape from the, of course, fucking crazy whatever it would be that they would do to a deaf and mute person? You'd have to really carefully disguise yourself as a dude, Julie, because nobody would believe that ass is a well, man's ass. Well, maybe not that ass, but I can bind these titties down and I kind of look mannish in the face. Like if I just <laughs> shave my hair mannish off, in the face. If I shave my hair off, dude, I don't know. I've been called sir many, many times in my life. Maybe that's just my BDE. <laughs> we do have BDE. I mean, I can see do it going full Twelfth Night, but yeah. at a certain point, some dude's gonna be like, "Let's have a pass on this tree," and then, oh, no. and then you're gonna be like, "Sure, excuse me." Ding, 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 ding. No, well, no, you need a go, go girl. girl. <laughs> yes, that's what awesome. we've unlocked the key to successful time travel while female. Please, <laughs> please don't actually use one of those things. They are a nightmare. They do not work. <laughs> Okay, so wait, back to the show. An improved go, go girl. We need like something softer, something more. Well, like a like a like a tiny funnel mm-hmm. that you would atta- like attach that would lead to like tubing that you could keep like like rolled up against your inner thigh, right. and then you would like yoink it out. So basically, what I'm saying is like a catheter that doesn't go inside you. Yes. <laughs> An external catheter. catheter. <laughs> That's what you need. Boy, you got to keep that shit clean, though. Oh, oh boy. Infections. Yes. Okay, so um, we know that Frank is drunk, and um, he kicks Brianna out of the office, and then well, Allison she and I wants were like, to know, so what's, what's wrong with you? Yeah, she wants to know what's going on, and he understa- like almost tells her, mm-hmm. which I think is really something else. That's, it's a very good moment. And then he's like, someday you'll understand. GTFO. And then she's like, she's like oh. 
someday maybe I'll understand, but someday maybe I won't care. And she's out. Slam. And I just knew in my heart that he was going to get in his car, drive, drink home, and die. I just like it, knew it in my heart. We really thought he was just going to die right then. Oh my God, this is terrible. So um, <laughs> I just looked at the timer. So uh, Frank did not die. Shortcut. Then. Not then. But at least we find out that they see each other again. So we cut back to the good old days where uh, Leary is explaining a little bit more of her history with her last husband and that he was bewitched by another woman. And Brianna seems a little kind of like, that's weird. Okay. And then Larry tells a nice story about how... Jamie used to like to sit by the fire and they would all gather the two girls, Muesli, Joni, and Leary, and Jamie would get on the couch and read the Bible together. And doesn't that just sound fun, you guys? And uh, I guess the kids' favorite story was Naomi and Ruth, which doesn't seem very awesomely appropriate for two kids, but whatever, it's the Bible, right? And she this, just liked hearing Jamie say, Ruth. And this is the one where, no, I'm thinking of Sarah. Is it is full it the, heathen? I don't know. I'm going to Google it. Is it the Naomi and Ruth story, the one about the surrogate mother, or is that Sarah? Yeah. Elamelech died, and the sons married two Moabite women. Malon married Ruth, and Chilion married or- Orpa, not what? Oprah. <laughs> Orpa. Orpa. After about ten years, the two sons of Naomi also died in Moab. Naomi decided to return to Bethlehem. She told her daughters-in-law to return to their own mothers and remarry. Who is Naomi and Ruth in the Bible? Book of Ruth relates that Ruth and Orpah, two women of Moab, married two sons of Elohim and Naomi and Jesus. The husbands of all three women die. Mm -hmm. Naomi plans to return to her native Bethlehem and urges her daughters-in-law to return to their families. Where is Jenna Polkowski when you need her? That's what I want to know. Yeah, get that shit on the slack. But I don't really know the story. It just seems like... Well, I guess it's a very female Ford story with a lot of dead dads. Yeah. So maybe they just feel seen or something something. by this story. We're going to... If you're in the slack, and a lot of you... We got a lot of new slack members in the last two weeks, guys. There are 72 people in that channel right now. Oh, my God. I had to wave hello to several people. Very exciting. Anyway, maybe Jenna Polkowski will give us a little rundown on Naomi and Ruth for the heathens at the table. Yeah. Um... Hold on. Oh, then the next scene is where Brianna is doing a little um, light handyman work around the house. <laughs> yeah. helping By fix the way, some she cabinet. can fix a fucking cabinet, she but whittle. she can't take a window off its hinges. She can't make a crutch. Yeah. Anyway, Patty. So this is where they piece together that her mom is actually that British whore. And then there's a lot of screaming. And Brianna is very confused. And, and upset. she's and upset. She's like, well, I can see I'm no longer welcome. And so she goes to get her shit. Oh, skipping a really important step. What? When Leary has figured it out and Brianna <gasps> oh, has yeah, it. Oh, yeah, the shady bitch. And, and Leary, like, just... Nell Hudson does a really good job. She's very good in this scene. Uh, and figures out, like, oh, shit, this is Jamie's daughter with that witch. Mm-hmm. So she decides that the best use of her time is to make Brianna, who's been nothing but nice to her, think that Jamie didn't want her. Yeah. And that's why she's never met him. And by the way, maybe you shouldn't go to America because if you go to America, he's just not going to want you again. And I don't want that to happen to you. That would be terrible. God, Jamie Fraser not wanting you. I wouldn't know what that feels like personally, but I bet <laughs> it's really rough. <laughs> And Brianna and Brianna's like, well, I mean, that's extremely upsetting. But regardless, I need to help them because I oh, can't yeah. say how I know this. <laughs> right. But they're gonna die I in a fire. <laughs> you know like, why I very forgot? Very specifically, gonna die in a fire. You know why I forgot? Why? Is because it's so stupid. <laughs> Here's the thing: is it so stupid, or is it just stupid because it's not a man in a bear suit? No, it's fucking stupid. Like, (laughs) she knew her mother time traveled. I have to admit that in at least one conversation about said time traveling, Claire might have told a story about possibly almost dying in a witch trial. Oh, well, we know she did because Brianna knew that Leary tried to have her fucking killed. Right, that's right. So, hey, how about we ixnay on the office prey talk... (laughs) So that people don't think you're a fucking witch. Doi. 
Joy. So also, thank you for reminding mm, me. I'm sorry I remembered. Here's another thing. Leary, over and over and over again in this episode, says, like, oh, well, I would do anything for my children. I would do anything for my children. I would do anything for my children. And then she doesn't say, wait, hold up. First of all, you're a witch. We'll come back to that. Second, <laughs> they're going to die in a fire? Because I would like to know about that. Because my daughter lives there and sees them a lot. Mm. And it would be really bad if my daughter, who I love, died in a fucking fire. No, she doesn't care about that because she's blinded by the Jamie Claire thing immediately. Like, when, whenever that comes into her mind, it is all-consuming. And she can't back out of it. It's really sad, actually. It is. Yeah. Well, because you listen to her talk about, like... When she was young, how they were promised, and uh, you know what? Nothing's he promised st- in this life. Stole kisses from me whenever he could, which true, mm-hmm. we saw that. He took a beating for me, which true. true. But this this lady shows up somehow, apparently not figured out through a hard life. It seems like that some dudes are bogus, and in this case. <laughs> Jamie was pretty bogus. So mm-hmm. if he's bogus for the rest of his life, maybe he was being bogus then too. Mm-hmm. Just a thought. Yeah, maybe. Just a thought. Because, you know, whatever. He was young. He was a virgin. Also, he didn't have any alternative. It wasn't until out of nowhere a fucking time-traveling hot-ass British bitch showed up in his life where he thought that there might be something else. You know? Yeah. That's really deep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Patty. <laughs> Fast forward, fucking Leary locks her in her bedroom like any Joan Crawford would. And we know she's just going to ride straight to the constable's office to say, I've got a witch in my house. Ugh. It was a bad move on Brianna's part. But I have to admit that I think, all right, so number, okay. No, you're totally right. My parents are going to die in a fire. I can't tell you how I know that. I just know is the number one most stupid thing she does. <laughs> up, up, up to now. Uh, well, no, I think number two might be crutch. Might be okay. not making yourself a fucking right, crutch. Right. But a solid number three, like a really <laughs> solid number three, is Brianna, who goes to MIT, MIT, didn't, she just was like, oh no, this window won't open. What's a girl to do? She eventually figured it out, but it took too long. No, she was just going to hit her over the head with the thing. Oh, no, but remember, she did get the window open right before the little girl ah, came in. Okay. Right. Because I'm going to need her. you to, like, use your fucking physics brain. I, was I want say, you to find, like, something that you can use. Simple tools. Yeah, a right. Lever, like a, a fulcrum wedge. point. You know, like, something. you just got to. Uh, you're a physics genius. What right. The, like, you're an MIT. Find, like, a flat piece of wood and go at those. They're definitely, it's definitely a flathead screwdriver situation. There is no fucking Phillips head in the past, okay? I mean, like, it all, is simple. We can see from the from the door the hinges are in the inside right. pull the pins yeah, pull take the pins, the pins. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you and then you could be like bitch I just fixed just, your cupboard you the, think I didn't know how to get through a door <laughs> the door just falls backward and you're standing there with like a stick in one hand and your bag in the other and you're like back up bitch <laughs> That would be awesome. That but no, really that's good. not what happened. No. Instead, she gets saved by a tiny little red-haired red herring. <laughs> How about this? How about she picks up the... She, she grabs her purse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Doy. Right? She picks up the door. She walks... Because she's a big girl. She walks down the stairs carrying the door. So she's got it like a, like a shield. shield yeah. Right? And then she can be like, listen, you can let me go or I can hit you with this door. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't take... My, all I have to do is just like push it at you and it would hurt a lot so you can let me go or I can hit you with this door but instead she almost beans a child over the head with a pitcher but doesn't and Joni comes in and saves her ass and then I thought to myself not only did Joni go against her mother and save her but she also took the time to go put two horses in harness on a fucking wagon to get Brianna out of there so this kid knows what's up and so they're very self-sufficient if man-hating and so Joni rides Brianna on out of there and gets her to Lollybrock. Um, Brianna has a tiny, tiny moment in Lollybrock with Ian, where Ian there, gives her some money. She also says, it's not your fault your mother's it's a, a ho- witch whore. A witch. I know specifically that it was witch because I was like, thank you. You're right. It's not my fault. Uh, so, fun fact. Yeah. Joan, Joan McKimmy. Mm-hmm. is the protagonist of an Outlander novella called The Space Between, in which Joan and Michael, second son of Ian and Jenny Murray, uh, go to France 
because Joan is going to become, become a nun and he is just escorting her. And then they fall in love on the road. I mean, you, told, you mentioned I that. don't know. Well, I know she falls in love. I'm assuming she falls in love with Michael, but yeah, she falls in love. On, on, the, the on the road to becoming a nun yeah. in France. It's mm-hmm. delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anyway, that's Joan. But thank you, Joni, for saving Brianna. Now Brianna's at Lally Brock and Ian's like, well, I can tell you're a Fraser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's money. Get out of here. If you know they're going to die. And I, does Ian know something? Mm-mm. Then how does he, what does Brianna say to him where he's like, go help them? She doesn't repeat the stupid I don't. I'm I sure can't she tell just you. says, well, because they all know that so they think that Claire has the sight. Ah, yes. Okay. So they probably just assume she also has the sight. Okay. Okay, fair. So Ian's like, whatever you have to do to save your parents, I can see it. You need passage. Here's some money. She's Take like, this no. money. I'm insanely hot. Yeah, I'm a fucking daddy. And then she takes the money and she leaves. And then uh, oh, and then he gives her a trunk full of Claire's clothes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because then we have the sweet hot topic coat. Uh, <laughs> I would be so happy. A return of the travel coat with the fur-lined hood and the uh, wristbands. Oh, it's so good. Can I buy you a beer? Yes, please. And yes. then Brianna goes to the port place, wherever that is. I'm lost. It's Scotland. Do you want a cold fusion or milk stout? Cold fusion, please. And then... Uh, She's trying to book passage on a boat, and there's this very sad man in a pub there that's like, please buy my daughter. Because <laughs> I don't, it's never really explained why he sold her. Was it a gambling debt indentured. thing? Indentured servant he was, thing? And he was worried that uh, her contract was going to be bought by someone who wanted to make her a con- contract. All right, so here's some in the book right. shit. I'm back from getting beer, guys. So, um, Joseph Wings. Uh, is indentured. His daughter is also indentured. I think it's for debt, Lizzie, Elizabeth. Um, I was going to say gambling. I don't think so, but okay. maybe. Um, well, he seems like a good guy here, but ex- they don't really give him a lot. They're very religious. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, he is trying to get Lizzie a contract with anybody who isn't a dude, essentially. So he sees this giantess... <laughs> It's like, please, <laughs> please, please buy my daughter. You need a servant, right? She can cook and she can sew and you should take her and bring out and in, in the box. Um, mm, Ian nice. is the one, I, I actually think it's um, young Jamie is, takes her to port and it's like, you should take, you have to take a servant. You can't travel on this boat by yourself. That's fucking mm-hmm. terrifying, which is correct. That's correct to young Jamie. I wish we'd seen you in this episode. Um, so they're trying to hire somebody to go with her. And he keeps bringing like, look at this strapping man. Look at this strapping man. Look at this strapping man. And she just doesn't want anybody. And she's talking about how it's like looking at all of the like dogs in a pet store and they all want you to take them home. Mm-hmm. And then Joseph Williams steps aside and she sees Lizzie. And in the narration, he goes, oh... A puppy. <laughs> it really makes me laugh. And I appreciate you can see Sophie have the moment where she's like, oh, shit. Okay. okay. Well, now I've seen her. Yeah, like, of course I can't let your daughter go get raped repeatedly by a guy who thinks he owns her. Mm-hmm. I guess I have a servant now. And then she buys passage for two. It's a very nice and moment. And they go to get on the boat. And as they're about to get on the boat, they turn... Um, Lizzie's father says goodbye to her and turns around and make sure you say your prayers and turns around and they wave at each other lovingly. And then Brianna looks off into the distance and the ghost of Frank appears. And you know what? I get it. It's like saying goodbye to your father and all that shit. I just thought it was a little cheesy. Oh, sure it is. Julie, what show are you watching? It's a time traveling romance. I know. God, (laughs) I just have to remind myself constantly. But it was good to see Tobias again. And I hope we have future flashbacks with him just sometime i want i want brianna to take an outdoorsman class that's I'm, what i want i'm gonna say i want to see some flashback of him teaching her shit in the woods that yeah. would be great fingers crossed okay so that was brianna's storyline for this episode i think that richard's storyline sorry roger richard roger storyline is go gonna faster. be way way much faster as a quick like um you know palate cleanser mm-hmm. sophie's in a bag right now <gasps> yes oh, oh she just got out of the bag oh <laughs> You guys, we got, um, speaking of, just a little diversion here. We got Sophie, a new scratcher. Look great. at this. She's about mm. to do, oh no, she's not going to do it. Do it, Sophie. We got, we got her one of those corner mounted cheek scratchers. She fucking loves it. Okay. So, Roger. 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 Back in oh. fucking 
Inverness uh, with Fiona. We see him pull up to the rocks in the Mr. Bean car. In the frumpiest fucking outfit. What the fuck is up with his hair and no beard? Why did he need no beard to time travel? <laughs> well, it, maybe he thought he was going to be a sailor. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe Well, it was... Stephen Bonnet is, is, is... But other sailors have beards? Yeah, I want to know why Roger shaved his beard. I mean, here's the thing. I'm sure there's a reason because that would have been a fucking Terry Dressback call, mm-hmm. right? So I'm sure there's a reason. And and it's not like we're not supposed to know that it's there because then Fiona says like, why? Well, we, you better shave. hope time travel exists or you'll have shaved your beard for nothing. I love yeah. her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's kind of in some frumpy time travel clothes and he's got a Beatles haircut and no beard and he is not looking hot. Whatever. He's still hot, but he's looking real frumpy. His outfit also looked a little bit hobbitish. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did look very hobbitish. Yeah, but a tall, tall hobbit. M- manly hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> and then he uh, reaches out for King Dick Rock and zoop, disappears. And then we are... Where does he end up? He ends up right at the port, right away, right? Mm-hmm. He didn't. He didn't see the mountains wistfully run right. and fall. He just <laughs> had, <laughs> he had He had a goal, and he got there, and that was to get to a motherfucking boat as motherfucking fast as he motherfucking could. Uh, remind me that this Roger going through the stones is what I want to talk about in the spoilers. Okay, wait. Let me write that down. Spoilers, Roger Rock. Roger Rock. <laughs> so he <laughs> is trying to find a way to get onto a boat to get to the States. And he walks into some fucking, I just want to say Nantucket pub because I'm reading Moby Dick right now. But he... Um, <laughs> Again? I'm still trying. Still, It's my Moby Dick. Moby <laughs> Dick is actually my Moby Dick. And he uh, is like, are you going to North Carolina? Are you going to North Carolina? If you're going to, to Carolina. Carolina. That was another thing when she sang that shit to fucking the kid. Mm-hmm. The San Francisco song. I was like, Man. Oh, I mean, they already made Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy a viral sensation. <laughs> I, think it's pro- I think the music is probably fine. Ugh, I guess. Um... And then he ends up asking a person, are you going there? And they're like, no, we're going here and here. And it turns around and guess who it is, you guys? Stone Cold Stephen Bonnet. Stone Cold Stephen Bonnet. Stone Cold is there. He's looking like a goddamn fox. Good he God. is kind of a fox. He, Ed, he's just Ed Spielers. Spielin. Yes, Ed Spielers. Spieler. He's, Sophie likes him too. He's a very good looking man. And Stephen Bonnet is not sexy. Like, that. Like I don't watch the character and go like, man, he's evil, but I'd hit that at all. Mm-hmm. But then when I, like, stop thinking about the show and just look at the face, all of a sudden I'm filled with lust. What is that? What's, about, what's that about? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, at first, Stephen Bonnet tries two times to warn him off of his boat, and then he does a coin flip and is like, okay, you can come on my boat. After Roger follows him down to the pier and then picks up a barrel of God knows what creme de menthe or whatever it is, and then fucking tries to follow him down and then he our hot ass evil dude flips a coin to make the decision and it's like that fucking character that javier bardem plays in no country for old men where he just kills people with a cattle fucking nailer he does have a, he has kind of a, a two-face thing going yeah, on too. Two-face mm-hmm. yeah two-face sugar what was that guy's name sugar and sugar sugar and it was spelled weird sugar. s U G H R the serial killer in No Country for Men. Anyway, have your bar down. Yes, so he gets on the boat, and then when he gets on the boat, we see that it is a very kind of cramped boat, and there are a lot of people there that have bought passage across the Atlantic Ocean, and a lot of them are women with babies, and we see Roger talking to a young woman with a baby who is very fussy and Roger tries to soothe the baby and gets it to shut up for a second and the baby starts crying again and it catches the attention of Stephen Bonnet. And I don't know if it's because it was Roger that soothed it and Stephen Bonnet wanted to like make a point about how he's better or whatever. But he comes over and he grabs the baby and I'm immediately like, he's just going to grab the baby by its feet and like dash its brains out. But he holds it and then gives it some whiskey because the baby's teething and soothes the baby and we're all like, oh, Stephen Bonnet, okay. Yeah, this is an in the books thing. Uh, in the books, they let a bunch of the passengers will, are at, will ask for kids to be able to bite his ring because he has a silver ring and I think that used to be a thing. Like it mm-hmm. used to be... Something that was supposed to be good for you, I think, especially like thing. if you're teething. So there is actually a precedent for Stephen Bonnet, not personally, but for Stephen Bonnet being the one a to teether. like, yeah, 
<laughs> um, so it's in there. So, um, but now we've been introduced to, what is her name? The baby's name is Morag. No, the mom's name is the Morag. Mor- okay. The baby's name is Jemmy. Mackenzie. Mackenzie, yeah. And so in that moment, we realized that Roger is also a Mackenzie. And I turned to Allison and I said, ancestor. And she goes, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll do that in the spoilers too. But yes, uh, all Mackenzies are related, which by the way means I'm related to Richard Rankin. And, uh, <laughs> too which, bad. Yeah, it's very complicated. So uh, <laughs> flash to later that night and we hear some screaming and, well, Roger hears some screaming and he runs to what I assume is the captain's quarters and there is Stephen Bonnet being a super dickhead, but oh, there's a kid that's got smallpox and uh, he wants to throw this little girl overboard and the mother is understanding, understandably hysterical, nah, 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 but then he does it. And then the mother jumps out after her and then Stephen Bonnet is all like, <laughs> and then search, Roger almost jumps out after right, Search the entire ship, anybody that's got a rash we got to throw him overboard. And you know what? I got to say this. Yes, he's a dick. And I'm sorry those people died. They were going to die anyway. And maybe he was kind of right. Allison was. Allison said, well, they could quarantine them. And I'm like, mm-hmm, sure. Smallpox, not necessarily fatal. But also, like, given the hygiene standards of the time and also being on a boat. Also, yeah. de- also depends on where they're at in their journey, too. Yeah, I'm not saying early. he's not... Ro- well, no, Roger's hair is real long. Oh, that's right. He has, it's been cause now a he's not, while. Yeah, because he's not so fucking schlumpy looking anymore because yeah. he's got now a five o'clock looking shadow real fine. and a little ponytail. He's still shaving. He looks more swole. Oh, we bypassed when, when Stephen Bonnet was like, y- you're an academic boy Oh, I can see from your hands that you haven't done shit. And Roger's like, oh, yeah? Look at me lift this back. <laughs> oh, that was on the pier. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so here he's looking more swole and he's got this ponytail and it's real. It's a real good look for him. It's way it, better. It almost makes me forget the Beatles haircut and the floppy pants. But not quite. Almost. And then uh, he runs down to find Morag and uh, her baby and to protect them. And so he tells them that he will hide them in the like storage room or whatever and try to protect them. Cool. Then later the next and time he we tells see- her he's also, that's what he swears on. He tells her he's also a Mackenzie. Mm hmm. Yes, that's an important. That's important. Yes. So, whoa. whoa. So he takes her down to where all the hard tack and whatever the fuck dried salt pork or whatever <laughs> the fuck they have on boats is, and tucks her hold away on, in the on. corner. I'm getting the worms out of my hard tack. Ew. And uh, hides her, and then he comes to check on her, and uh, guess who follows him in there? Stone Cold Steve, Steve Bonnet with his co- with his coin. And he's going to make a decision about whether or not somebody stays on the boat. We're led to believe it's about the mother, but it's actually Roger. And then Stone Cold Stephen Bonnet does this thing again where he tells us a sad story about himself that's very sad and depressing and horrible. But you know what? Why people don't like you, bud? It's probably, as Allison said, because you're a fucking psycho and people can tell. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good... This is also straight from the books. It's a good story, though. I will say... In the bang. Um... Roger is coming out from where he, first of all, he doesn't hide them. He finds them Mm -hmm. and then says like, well, I mean, is the baby actually sick? Because Jesus fucking Christ, if the baby has smallpox, it's going to die. What are you going to do? And she's like, no, it's milk rash. It's milk rash, which it is. Mm -hmm. Um, And he just agrees to bring food. So it's not his idea to hide them. Okay. Then he's coming out from the below decks or whatever. And Stephen Bonnet sees him. And calls him over to chat, and he Roger can't tell if he's actually caught or not, and they're having a conversation about fucking mortality, and then Stephen Bonnet tells him this story, just like they're having a conversation on the deck. Just tells the story, and it's like, so, heads or tails? Yeah. Ugh. It is fucking creepy, and it's I sort should. of wish Sugar. that it had been a little... Anyway, um, so he flips he a coin. And he he wins. heads land, so Roger lives on. Um... And then, was that kind of the end of That's the project? He's got line? an uncanny glint in his eye that says, I have to get the fuck off this boat. Yes, get the fuck off that boat, yo. You need to get away from this man. And then, um, I have to believe that eventually Sophie is going to end up on that boat. No, she booked passage on a different boat. The oh, Philip thank Alonso. God. Thank God. Yeah, it's a different boat. Okay, cool. So, that's the episode. No. I don't really... <laughs> Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. Hap- there's a lot of moving pieces happening right now to get all of our favorite characters back together again. Yes, so we can get to the things we can rate, like yeah. sexiness. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think it's, we we'll talk about costumes. I think mm-hmm. that this is 
for the most part, a very well handled episode. I think they make a bunch of really smart decisions adaptation wise. I think, um, yeah, I mean, Brianna and Roger become essentially like secondary protagonists for Mm -hmm. the rest of the fucking show. So it's really important that we get used to spending time with them and not Mm -hmm. as like, kind of like a just weirdo sub story. They've got to have a real, real narrative heft. As a point that you're making right here, I didn't even think about it. And this is saying something. I didn't even think about it until the, after the show thing with mustache and Meryl and everything, there was zero Jamie and Claire. I know. And And I didn't even, it didn't even really occur to me because it's a good episode. Mm -hmm. It's not, well, you don't think it's a good episode. I don't, I don't think it's bad. I think that I think it's good. I think that uh, since I haven't read the books, I didn't know what was supposed to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it the Leary thing was interesting, but also very hard a hard pill to swallow. Like, oh come on! And then the telling them about my parents are going to die in a fire. Like there were a couple of things that pulled me way out of it. Yeah, and so that can sometimes dampen my enjoyment, but. She selfie was so much better this episode. It was so good to see Tobias. They they're they're, they're quibbles. Oh, there those was, scenes were so good. And there, there was only one like there. I noticed at least if we're uh, while we were watching, there's only one moment where we all kind of collectively started looking at the cookies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think it was when uh, it, they were gardening and they were telling the stories because mm-hmm. like we we it was like that's a little bit of fluff. And I think yeah. we all kind of went. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're She's good. cute. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. whatever. Give me but everything cookie. else about that was very engaging. As someone who obviously doesn't watch. But apparently mm-hmm. I'm watching a lot now. Mm-hmm. Um, That's how we get you. God, I've watched some. Damn it, I've been sold. Um, <laughs> but like this is this was engaging. I and mean, like yeah. I, you know, right. come back. Well, let's easy. skip most of the scales. But I do want to know who is your TGP, um, TPP now, the Platinum the Pamplemousse. Pamplemousse. Um, who's well, your TPP for the EPISOD? I think it's... Almost unfair to say Tobias, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make that choice. Say Tobias. No. Honey, if you if you think it's Tobias, say Tobias. There are three of us. We will honor others. If your heart says if the if the wind uh, cries Mariah, then <laughs> if the wind cries Tobias. Yes. I uh the wind does not actually. Kay. The wind cries uh Larry. Oh, Nell Hudson. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna go Nell Hudson on this one because this obviously didn't exist in the book, so this was a new storyline. I thought it was, even though it was stupid that she picked <laughs> Brianna up once Brianna was there. Uh, to declare, I just want to be clear. You're saying that, that whole narratively, story, I it did is not like it. Cheesy, right? That the person who found her was Leary. Yes, you are not saying it was stupid of Leary to pick up a no, frozen no, 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 dying no, woman. No, that's not what okay. I mean. <laughs> I think narratively <laughs> speaking, it was too convenient and weird. But once we're there and we can't go back anymore, she did a great job, especially in kind of the slow burn of like realizing who Brianna was talking about. And she's just, I mean, it's easy to hate Larry because she's always just doing terrible things. But Nell, what's her name? What's her name? Nell? It is Nell Hudson, right? Can you yes, check yeah, our I believe it real is. IMDb? Nell Hudson is doing really good work in what is essentially kind of a thankless and very difficult role. Yep. So I'm going to say That's her. That's a really good choice. I'm going to say her. Well, she's got that maid face. Yeah, she does. She has Pretty like a maid one face. maid face. <laughs> uh, it's They call the wind Mariah and the wind cries Mary and I combine them and I feel really good about it. Yeah, I think... I wonder what it would sound like to have those two songs together. And they call the wind Mariah. Mariah. The wind cries oh. Mary. Mary. That would work. <laughs> Nell Hudson confirmed. Yes, Great, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Janine, who's your platinum pamplemousse for the week? I don't know, man. Fucking Stone Cold is pretty damn great. Isn't he fucking terrifying? He scares the shit out of me. Anybody who bases things on a coin flip is terrifying. And I think part of the thing that like really throws me for a loop is that like when you have someone who's who is extremely charming, who can be extremely charming, uh, and understands like that he's his effect on people. Yeah, and he has no like no qualms about leveraging that. Mm -hmm. Those people scare the fuck out of me. Yeah, it's a sociopath. Yeah, totally. That just like like. I'm bad at recognizing some of those things, and so I can't tell when someone's actually doing that fucking shit. Mm -hmm. Fucks me up. He scares the shit out of me. (laughs) When he picks that baby up, it's not just because we have this backstory that we know he's a bad dude. 
that it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. Like you, if that was just a strange man, you'd be terrified, wouldn't oh, you? Oh yeah, no, right? I, I literally thought he was just going to kill the baby. Yeah, totally. And then he doesn't, and then he puts that girl on the ledge, and that shove, that like casual he shove, out of the way, just like fwomf. Yeah. nothing but net. Yeah, <laughs> oh, very upsetting. No, yeah. it's a really good pick, Ed Spielers. Yes. Sp- uh, yeah, you know, for that for that stunt, actually, actually, uh, as like a as an aside, I think they might have put her on put that girl on a um, on cables so that he could give her a bigger push and she could fly further and land on a softer pillow. I'm sure. Cool. Because it looked very because it was a big push. She didn't mm-hmm. just go boop. She went. She flew. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, side stunt note. The life of life from my past. Well. <laughs> I feel like now I feel like it's cheating to pick Tobias. It's not really cheating. It's just super easy because he is without a doubt the best actor on the show anytime he's there. That doesn't preclude the fact that he is really good and sometimes deserves recognition. That's like- I feel cheated that we didn't get more more of him. <laughs> well, no, always, but I feel cheated that we didn't get more Black Jack Randall Duke of Sandringham. That's what I feel because that would have been two of the best actors on the show. Just mm. oh, the two of them together. Yeah, yes. that's mm-hmm. what I, I and like. Cheers to Golden Globe nominee Katrina Balfe, who mm-hmm. is very good, but and is not going to win that award. No, but yeah. it's an honor to be nominated. It is an honor to be nominated. Um, I don't. Okay, know well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna like. Say Tobias Menzies because for obvious reasons. However, I'm going to choose a second place because that's okay. the more interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, he's very good. Great screen drunk. Um, the smiling and the grimacing at the same time. Oh, the like the hangover wake up where they're eating the biscuits with the clotted cream. Mm-hmm. Just really good. Really good shit. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the fact that you can tell that he still loves Claire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He just is all... Bro- oh. Anyway. Um... He says so much and little at the same time. You know mm-hmm. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do like a double good effort team for Richard Rankin and Sophie Skelton. Okay. And I think that Mr. Rankin has mm, more obvious abilities. <laughs> But Sophie had a harder job this week and mm-hmm. I think did a good job of it. Yeah. Um, it could have been really easily to wipe away too much. Uh, but she sold the shit out of her Survivor Barbie stuff specifically. Mm-hmm. That all of that, the limping and the leaning, and I got the whole, she didn't say a word and I got the whole story. I got like mm-hmm. when she was feeling hopeless and when she was feeling determined and it was a whole journey and I understood all of it. Yep. And I'm really into that. And then the look of like undiluted pleasure on her face when she meets someone who knows her father was beautiful. And all of her shit with Lizzie Weymouth was beautiful. Basically, I think all of her nonverbal stuff is amazing, which makes mm-hmm. me very optimistic about th- her actual lines of dialogue in the future moving forward. Um, right. Anyway, that's that. Uh, so we are going to do a little Je suis spoiler brief, brief, brief after this. Um, I have to refresh our patron list because somebody updated their pledge an extra five dollars while we were talking. What? Thank <laughs> you. So, to, so we have a new ten dollar like uh, in the last twenty minutes. Thank you. Um, you uh, can find us on things according to Mr. Janine Painine. Painine? I don't know. know. Painine. Uh, you can find us on uh, Twitter uh, at Podlandercast. Podlandercast. <laughs> Sorry, it's been two weeks. It's been a while. It's been You've t- been selling that alpaca. I've been selling a lot of alpaca, and it's been moving that alpaca. It's been two weeks for me, and it's like my elbows. I'm sorry, and guys. I'm also really bad no, at this anyway. So I'm just like all over the place right now. Um, so Twitter at Paul Lindercast. Twitter at Facebook Paul. at facebook.com slash Pod Yeah, let's just get us through this, and then pay, our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Pod Great, awesome. And now here I go. Uh, saying a special thanks to uh, we love all of our Patreon. We really do Patreon love supporters. all of you guys. We love you all You're equally, s- but we especially love. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, Oh God, I'm I'm already gonna screw this up. No, you're gonna be great. I hate this job. Okay. This is so hard. Give it to me. It's totally fine. <laughs> Wait, I can do it too. Julie's turn. Right. Oh, I just feel I feel so scared about Back messing off. people's names up. Julie's turn. God damn. <laughs> all right, 
Chantel Daniels, Beth Locke, Amanda Newton, Jen Lander Drunklin, Dr. J, Trish McCrary, Carrie Kirshner, and Gavin. Oh, honey, Katie Kirshner. We know Katie. <laughs> Katie Kirshner. Did I not say you that? You said Carrie Kushner. Oh, I don't have my glasses on. Jenna Polkowski, <laughs> Lori McGuire, Kara Marlowe, Ann Gibson, Aaron Yetzi, Bib Pickles, Chantal, Chantal Salters. That's a new one. Hi. Hi, Chantal. Meredith O. Audrey. God damn, I need my glasses. Meredith Audrey. Julie, I give it to me. Nope, I'm almost there. <laughs> Catherine Marlowe? No, Catherine Marshall Eastman. That's the long one that we can't see. And it's a new one. Hi, Yay, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Tanner Cole. Kath- mm, Friday Payton. Heather Moore. Molly Layton. Flourish Root. Kiki. The, the Wise. Wise. Mary Lumpkin. Crystal Nanavati, Ruth McCormick, Tara Lucchino, Rachel Patterson, mm, Tara Lucchino, and, sorry, Kathleen Moniz. Hi, Mom! Hi, Hi Mom! Mom. Mm-hmm. That's it. All right. Well. I, I just need to practice. Well, it changes, the, though. Well, I, give me this much. I'll write myself a script so that I, I don't sound like a dummy every time we get to our social media stuff. Oh, will you write it into, like, a song? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, my God. Sure. Yeah, why not? Why not? Kara Marlowe, darling Kara Marlowe, <laughs> Viv Pickles, and, and Jen Dr. Lander. Dr. J. And, yeah, Jen Lander of the Drunklin Landers. You can all find us on Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> and Patreon. Kathleen Moniz. Hi, Mom <laughs> Kathleen Moniz. Yeah, amazing. Uh, anyway, if you don't want to hear spoilery shit, Go away now. If you do, come sit by me. Okay, what shit was I supposed to talk about? I know it was Roger. You were supposed to talk about Roger. Rock, Roger Rock. Roger Rock. Rock. Oh, yes. So we talked about this a little a couple weeks ago, I think. Um, so the whole deal with the time travel is that... You're being pulled through time, and it mm-hmm. hurts, mm-hmm. and it sounds like bees, apparently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you need the gemstone. Um, but it helps if you have somebody you're moving to. So the theory uh. is, right, that um, that Claire ended up in the time that she did because of Black Bees, Black Jack Randall was there, that um, Galus ended up there because of Bonnie Prince Charlie, uh, and so on and so on. So Claire ended up there so, because of Blackjack, not because of Jamie, not because of the love of her life. That well, wasn't it. Well, she didn't know him. Right. Okay. And then so. she landed like fucking feet from Blackjack Randall. Right. Okay. This is, I mean, this is my theory. Got it. Um, so uh, the first, in the books, the first time that Roger tries to go through the stones, he's like upset, obviously, thinking big thoughts. And he, for whatever <laughs> reason, he starts thinking about his dad. And he doesn't know this to traveling to a person thing. So he touches the rocks. Rocks! Sorry. And, um, I want to rock! Rock! <laughs> uh, touches the rocks and gets, like, booted out of time. <laughs> he Just feels floating. like he gets sucked in, and then all of a sudden he's like, Phew! and he and he wakes up, and um, Fiona's there, and she's like, you're on fire? And he can't fucking get... She's <laughs> like... <laughs> Uh, and his gemstone is all burned up. Oh, no. Right? And he, what he thinks happened is he was thinking of his dad. And so the Dick Rocks tried to send him to his dad, only it was at a time when he was also alive. So he gets, like, vomited back out oh, yeah. and can't enter. But then he can't go back because he doesn't have a gemstone. So then Fiona gives him her engagement ring oh, and oh, no. tells him that she's going to tell her fiancé that she lost it at a bar or something. So that he can go through. And he does. Um, But that becomes really Mm -hmm. important because, and they didn't do it. And I wonder if they're still going to address it because when uh, Brianna and Roger reunite, which will be in the next episode, that's not Mm going to see, you saw it in the preview, right? Um, At first she's like, oh my God, Roger, I'm so happy to see you. And you mentioned this. And then she flips out because she thinks they're not going to be able to get back because she has no one else. And that's not true. She has a fucking roommate that she was friends with. And like Joe Abernathy is still there and presumably there are other people she cares about, but it infers that because they don't break up really like they, things get weird and rocky and tense because she doesn't want to marry him, but they don't split like they do in the show. Mm hmm. 
So she so just straight she, up leaves him even though they didn't break up. She just goes back to the past. She go well, yeah, and she she basically sneaks away. Oh, that's kind of shit. And writes this letter. She sends him all her stuff because she's planning on coming back. Right. But so she sends him a letter in case she can't come back. Um, but the reason that she doesn't say like, Hey, I'm going to do this is because she knows he would say, well, I'm coming with you. And she is worried. She won't be able to get back if he's not there because he would be her person, Mm -hmm. right? Her anchor. Totally. So Mm -hmm. when he comes through, she's like, Roger, oh my God. And then she's like, Roger, oh my God. And then just starts sobbing because she thinks they're not going to be able to get back. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and then they fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. Fingers I, crossed. I called it. I was like, they're back in old timesy times now. They're all dirty and stinky. Why don't they just if it's like the seal book, the deal? If it's like the book, it's in a barn. Of course. In total darkness. What? And it's pretty hot, I'm not gonna all lie. Right. All right. Um but like they're like, I can't wear your clothes. Like And they don't know how to work those clothes very well either. Yeah. Uh there was another thing. There was another Roger thing. Stephen Bonnet, Morag. Okay, so it is also important. Um, the book specify more that Roger, having done a bunch of research on his family tree because of Galus, uh, knows that Morag is in his family tree. Mm-hmm. And he also knows who she's married to. Because she's Morag McKenzie, which means that like he is related to her because he's you know, her descendant, but would not be related to her by blood in this time because she married into the Mackenzies Mm -hmm. and her husband is the witch's get. That's Galus's baby by Gilf. By Gilf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so Outlander seems to think that being a devious motherfucker is hereditary <laughs> because this guy is not cool. Her husband is not cool. He's not a cool dude. The witches get the witches get. It's not okay, cool. So Galus, son is a dick bag. He's a dick bag. Okay. Um, I mean, I can buy it. Don't, like fucking Gilf wasn't that great either. Yeah. But he was hot. He was hot, but he was kind of a dick bag. He was a dick bag. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's the Roger shit. There's a, but I think we're done with boats for now. <laughs> oh God. Please. I suspect that we're Brianna's just going to get off the ship. There's not going to be any boat fucking escapades between now and the time she lands in the U.S.? I doubt it. Ooh. There's a really... The only thing that happens... So Lizzie gets sick. Mm-hmm. I mentioned this in the stream. Lizzie gets sick. She gets, I think, scarlet fever. Ooh. And uh, she... so And they just talk about how she got sick on the boat. They don't spend time together on okay. the boat. Then she's just walking around in her pants and everyone's mad that she's wearing pants, but <sighs> she's not wearing pants. She's wearing that amazing sweet ass coat That's with right. her sick ass trunk full of Claire's cool ass clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she goes to Wilmington mm-hmm. and accidentally sees Roger and then they fuck. In a barn. Yeah. We'll see. And it like smells like manure and shit. <laughs> oh, come on. No, that's good because they both stink at this point. Right? So why well, not just roll around like, in filth? You think gross and then you start thinking about it and you're like... Like, <laughs> like what? straw sticking to you and shit. Yeah, but then you gotta have like a fresh spring somewhere right outside to like hose your bits off because literal guaranteed yeast infection. Yeah, a roll in the hay is not as good. Yeah, hay up your butt. <laughs> oh God, that's just po- pokey you know too. What? They're pokey. Yeah. I would rather be poked by hay by hay than covered in sand. Yes. I hate fucking sand in your crevices. It's harder to get rid of sand than it is to get rid of hay. Sand is nature's confetti. Yes, and glitter. (laughs) Glitter, too. Nature's glitter. There you go. It finds finds its way into every crevice. Hay kind of finds its way into crevices, but is much easier to remove. Yeah, because it's like a big stick. Yeah. Yeah. Or a smaller stick, but still easy. Sure, yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, compared to sand, it's giant compared to sand. One time we went on a uh, staff retreat when I worked for the Children's Theater in Oregon, and we went out to a house on the beach in Newport Beach. And my boss... We were sitting out on the deck. It was a lovely night, and we were talking about it. She goes, oh, sand in my shoes. And I was like, Deb, you got sand in your ass right now. She's like, what? And I was like, you're going to wake up. You had not gone to the beach, but you're right here. You're going to wake up with sand in your ears, in your hair, (laughs) and in your fucking butt crack. So just be ready. There's sand everywhere. I would take 
so I would do sand over mud mm-hmm. because mud dries <gasps> like Kinky a paste, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Whereas sand, if it dries, then it just brushes off more easily. Right, right, right. But and manure, same. Oh God, I guess it would. Yeah. So. If they're fucking in the barn, I hope they're fucking away from the dew. <laughs> from the dew, dew. Hopefully they are in some nice dry hay. It's a little bouncy, mm-hmm. but still kind of pokey. He's right. They're doing it, but not do doing it. Oh. Oh, no. Lord. <laughs> no. That seems like a good place to end. Yes. Yeah, hey, I think so too. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, y'all, exactly when we're recording next week because I'm leaving for Las Vegas on Wednesday and we're all going to be recording remotely, so it's going to be different and hopefully really cool. Um, But hopefully we will have the episode out to you on the 23rd or 24th. right? right? Uh, But because the three of us will not be together again before Christmas... Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I love you. Cheers, You're the you best. Too. We've got all kinds of big plans for next year. Mm-hmm. They mostly involve um, fucking and hay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.